Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Top 5 New Comics for October 23rd of 2024. I'm, as always, Chris, and we got another, I mean, every week, every week, we got a cool slate of books for you that I want to talk about, so let's talk about this week's slate of cool books, starting with Absolute Wonder Woman number one. This is written by Kelly Thompson with art by Hayden Sherman, colors by Jordi Belair, letters by Becca Carey and edited by Chris Conroy. We talked about Absolute Batman number one when that came out. We talked a lot about DC All In, the Absolute Universe, everything that DC's doing, and the excitement it's brought to the brand, for me personally, and how I, I really enjoy these like soft reboots that DC does and everything. And I can't remember if I talked about it during the Absolute Batman or not, but getting the Absolute Universe for me is super exciting because... If you haven't noticed on this series, I really love the Ultimate Universe, too. The original Ultimate Universe was coming about when I was first getting back into comics and reading a lot of Marvel. And when that went away, there was a void there for me that, you know, kind of sucked. I really enjoyed the ups and downs of the Ultimate Universe, but I, I thought it was a fun experiment, and I was hoping that it would continue to go on. And then when they announced they're kind of redoing the Ultimate Universe in this new and different way with John Hickman and others, I got really excited. Now to see DC take that and do it their way is also super exciting. I've been getting, I'm getting all the absolute books. I'm really excited for all of them. I think we've got great creative teams here. And for this one in particular, to see Wonder Woman with this awesome creative team and just a interesting idea like a wonder woman with no paradise island a wonder woman who is essentially raised in hell and what does that mean for the character who is she and what does that bring and then add in all these other little elements to it like it, she looks way more badass she seems to have more of a, a a gruff and rough attitude to her look and the feel of the book uh being someone who really enjoys uh the manga berserk and uh, the video game Final Fantasy VII, to see her with this gigantic sword that she's carrying around just brings some nostalgia factor into it. There's a lot of cool things going into this book that I, I just think lends itself to be something different and cool. And that's what I really want out of the Absolute Universe is to give me these characters I know and love and have read for most, if not all, of my life and present them in a new and different way and present them in a rougher way, in a more gruesome and violent way and and that's what absolute batman gave me so i'm really excited to see how we get this with absolute wonder woman and you know just seeing kelly thompson doing something over dc is really exciting i, I think she's a, a talented writer who's done some cool books over the years even if they're not books that i'm necessarily into and when i do pick up something she does i always really enjoy it but she tends to do characters that are outside of my wheelhouse that i don't necessarily read on a regular basis and to see our wonder woman book just uh was really cool and it to be this wonder woman book is even cooler so i'm really excited to get dive deeper into this absolute universe to see what the wonder woman is and i'm sure in the future we'll be talking about superman as well speaking of superman let's do our superman power hour starting with superman number 19 this is written by Joshua Williamson with art by Dan Mora Colors by Alejandro Sanchez and letters by Andrea Mayer. Since Joshua Williamson took over Superman, it's been one of the best books at DC. And I've just really enjoyed every second of it. Uh, to see Superman, Superman's a tough character to really dive into because... As we all know, he is, in a lot of ways, an all-powerful being that's the original superhero. And the thing with him that is different from a lot of modern superhero characters is that Superman needs to project bright and uh, needs to project hope. And there needs to be a positivity around him. And I think Joshua Williamson and the, the crew he's been with throughout this series has done that spectacularly and then you bring in dan mora who's been working on quite a few things but most specifically he, he worked on the world's finest book with mark wade and then 
him and Mark Wade went over and did the Shazam book for a little while. And I thought that both of those books did that same thing that we're talking about here. It's a bright, positive book with superhero elements and, and over the top things. And then you kind of roll into everything I just said that this new story arc is part of the all in initiative is going to feature doomsday, which brings back a lot of nostalgia for old time readers of Superman. Uh, for me, I, I discovered, you know, doomsday and the death of Superman, all that later in life, not being a big DC fan. So it doesn't hold as much nostalgia for me, but Doomsday is still one of those characters that's like iconic within Superman. So to bring him back means something and to do something with him, you better have something good for it. And But I have faith that Joshua Williamson is one of those guys that has something for this book. Uh, as, as I said already, Superman's probably my favorite book at DC right now. If not, it's in the top two or three. It's just been a great title. And... It's getting this little refresh with All In, with a new art team and all that. And I just, I cannot wait, wait to get my hands on it this coming Wednesday. And after that, in the Superman Power Hour, we're going to switch over to Action Comics 1072. This is written by Mark Wade with art by Clayton Henry and Michael Scheffler. Colors by Matt Herms. And then the backup story is by Marika Tamaki, art by Skylar Partridge, and colors by Marissa Lewis. This weekly title, it's been on my list every week since, and for good reason. The The action comics that Mark Wade is doing right now has been so, so good in so many ways. It's great to see Mark back on the character. He has his own version of the character that just feels right in so many ways. I love that the, the regular Superman book we talked about, it's it's a, someone new and different doing the book, and I like to see new creative ideas on characters. It's one of the things I said about when they brought back the JSA. I didn't want Jeff Johns because I felt like we needed new blood in, that, uh, in the creative field there. But what's cool about Superman is you have multiple titles going on at the same time. You have the main Superman book, which is his main adventures, in the DCU, it's time. Action Comics can really do whatever it wants. Sometimes it ties into what's going on in the Superman books. Uh, for instance, when Joshua Williamson was writing Action Comics for a few months there, he did a crossover that brought those books together. Sometimes it takes place in the past. I think with the Gail Simone series recently that just ended, that took back in the early years of Superman's career. And this one in particular is taking place in between the actions of absolute power that had just ended a few months ago and where Superman is now. So it's that in between space where Mark can play with it and, and tell some, tell a story that is an adventure of Superman, but doesn't have to affect directly what's happening with all in and just the main DC book. And he's been doing a spectacular job of it. Uh, like I said, it's been a weekly book. So I understand the commitment to a weekly book, but I, I can't recommend enough checking out Action Comics, seeing if you get those past couple of issues and catching up because it's been a lot of fun. And then the Supergirl uh, story at the end has been really good as well. I love the intrigue that it's building, that it's not necessarily giving us everything. And doing, really telling a story in a way that is tricky, but as a backup story, it works because you're almost guaranteed that space because no offense to the creative team here or the character involved with Supergirl, but people are buying this book for Superman and the main Superman, a story. And they just get this extra story at the end. And that gives you ground to kind of play with. It's not its own title that has to build its own audience and to depend on that big cliffhanger at the end and depend on all these things. So it has a lot of promise there. So we'll leave the Superman power hour. And head over to our next book, which is Gatchaman number four. It's written by Carl Cullen Bunn with art by Chris Batista. The Gatchaman book has just been a blast. Uh, it's a big reminder that Cullen Bunn, while the master of horror, is just a great writer. He's a, a guy who knows how to write good, compelling stories and good, compelling comic books in particular. 
And I've just really enjoyed the the Sunday morning cartoon flair of it, the the feel of the book, the the campy superhero action with a little bit of an anime flair in there. There's just so much in this title that's been really good. And just for Mad Cave to pluck this out of irrelevancy, bring it back and try to do something, building all of these new books off of it with the Gachamon book and some of the one shots they've done, the Galactor mini series they're doing, and I'm sure there's more we're going to see in the future, has been refreshing in a lot of ways. It's it's a really great title that I've just had so much fun reading, and I just look forward to diving further into what Colin and crew have for this series. And it's another one. We're only four issues in. If you if you haven't read it yet, uh, I'm I'm sure it'd be doable to get past issues and catch up. If not, I'm sure we're right on the cusp of a trade if you're a trade waiter. But the Gotcha Man book has been just so much fun, and I can't recommend it enough. And then we will end with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number five. This is written by Jason Aaron with Art and Colors by Cliff Chang. We've gone through the first two TMNT books and we've gotten stories of single singular stories about Raphael and Michelangelo. Both having their own unique feel and flair to them and both have been just spectacular issues all around. And as I've said in the past, I just love that they're that Jason's storytelling through these first four or five issues is going to be singular in nature, focusing on what each turtle is doing as they have separated before the events of this series. And for this one, we're going to focus on Leonardo. Leonardo, as a character, is somebody who... I know some in my life who Leonardo is their favorite. For me, like most of the Turtles fans I know, and this goes for me as well, like Mike, he's the favorite. He's always like, he's the fun one. He's he's a good time. But Leo is an interesting character in his own. And to see him in the space he's in, which is to, to travel in the world, he's looking to find peace in his life. And how that's going to tie into Raphael finding Michelangelo at the end of last issue and what they went through with the re the rise of the Foot Clan again and all that. I just really look forward to seeing how this all ties in and, and what story Jason has for where Leo is in the world. Um, and then to see Cliff Chang on the book, I love that each issue is having its own unique artist. Obviously, we know who's going to be taking over the book in the future, but to see Cliff Chang on this book, who's a, a DC writer, I'm sorry, DC artist, whose style I always really enjoyed is really cool as well. So, And Turtles, the Turtles have never dipped in popularity. I don't think there was a time when they haven't been a top-tier IP. But to see the, the comic book resurgence of this book with Jason Aaron taking over, and that's to say nothing about the previous series, I know that Turtles fans love that series, and it's very much looked highly upon. But... To see how many people talk about the Turtles again with Jason Aaron taking over. And the fact that he's killing it on the book has been really great to see. So everybody, thank you for watching. Uh, if you want to support me further, the best ways to do it on this video right here. You can like the video, comment down below. Let me know what books you're looking forward to this week. Uh, what on my list is your favorite? What's not on my list that is a shame it's not on my list? Something like that. Let me know down in the comments below. And make sure you subscribe to the channel to get all the videos we do every week on the top five, as well as the comic creator interviews we do, the, the Fortune Comic News podcast segments that we do, and all that. And speaking of the Fortune Comic News podcast, you could also get that in, in audio on Podcatcher of Your Choice. We're on all of them, and if I'm not on one, let me know, and I'll find a way to get on that. And then also you can see my writing at chriscomicscorner.substack.com. So once again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you all here next week.